Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I think uh, uh, this is the right time to start knowing how the cycles of agile anti pattern is bombing us all. I am still going to jump into the topic because I heard that I have very less time now. So, first of all, uh, a bit about me. Picture might be not matching to me at present, but yeah, this is me on. So, I am working in excellent from a very long time and uh, um, I really like to play movies and reading management books, playing new creative chairs, 100 plus projects I manage, and I'm certified in PNP, ITL, and I work with three industries, finance, biomedical, and IT, and IT graduates. Uh, Proactively implemented multiple strategies to build support portfolio at tax level. Now, some interesting topic, which is how does your mind is reacting when you are hearing about Agile anti pattern? Agile anti pattern is something not most commonly used for. When I heard it first, it was something like a fancy word. Okay, what is anti pattern? Something like a missile or something. And why do why should I know about? It? But then someone like one of my colleagues forwarded some more links. Okay, you should know about it. And then I realized most of my project is having those anti patterns. And those anti patterns are really impacting everything so badly that uh, you can understand if you are recording something and you are putting a cover on the camera and then recording. So, doing a Zyl with an Zyl anti pattern is like that. It can blindly complete. You will forget what's actually the motive behind doing a Zyl. It's not just someone client asks to scrum, calm down, and we are just running sprints and we don't know what is the benefit of sprints. Or we don't know the benefits, but we are not able to harvest those benefits. So that is as I like pattern, which will reduce our benefits we can get from as I an anti pattern mode you can use anywhere, like uh, medicines. So it is just a term used which can say that as I benefits can be reduced by as I anti pattern. Now let's quickly look what's our aim. Very easy to say about Agile anti patterns, but how to identify this? Not an easy way, right? We'll see how we can identify this. One of the most heated topic. Let's give story points to works or not. Have you faced that? In your sprints when you're doing and you have lots of the bugs to solve and you get nothing, then you will feel why are you even fixing the bugs? Sometimes people are counting people performance on how many story bugs that person is achieving and that is also one of the agile anti pattern because performance should be team wise. So people are not so interested in taking bugs if you don't put a story points and if you put then it's uh, another agile anti pattern. So there are two agile anti patterns and you have to find a middle one. Daily standards. Right now, like I am standing up, but how can I make my session more effective? DSX. Let's join it. Discuss it for half an hour. Oh, we are into some critical discussion today. We have really realized that's standard. But do we know what is actually why someone thought, why that someone got a dream, let's do it only 15 minutes? Why 15 minutes? Why not 14? Why not 16? Why only 15? Why only these three portions? When we are gathering together, we can ask a lot, we can discuss a lot. But as I am is saying, actually, daily standard. We need to understand why it is 15 minutes, why it is called daily stand up, why stand up, and then how we can make more effective and how SL anti patterns are really impacting them. Glossy. Many of us love that term and that is high, like salary high, low salary, no one loves, low velocity, no one loves. High velocity, now we like it, right? So, do you know SL anti patterns are actually killing your velocity? So, if you need high salary, you should know what is reducing your salary. Similarly, the velocity is something we have to know what is reducing it. What I love it when I started my management career around 12 years back. And when I, when I heard Agile, what the sorry. <laughs> How can I do sprint at that time? I was thinking. And it was not very possible for me to adapt Agile and I was so much in work. But then I had to change my mind. But I realized even I was doing as well, but then also doing mini waterfalls. Something like you do something but not dedicated. Scrum master. 
something like a ringmaster. <laughs> Scrum master is actually not a ringmaster, but it is not even like exactly sometimes it's a servant leader. It is much more than that. It is something like we have a small box, we are not even using its full potential. This Scrum master will facilitate events and that's it. Why only that's it? This person is going to give you lots. And let's see how we can do that. Scrum events. Let's not do the rat though, we have a TV in the evening. This is the last day of the spring. You must have said or heard that thing. Really? And that's the right thing to do. If you don't know the benefit. If you don't know the benefit and joining it, then don't know. Because actually, we are not going to be active participants and we will be more discouraged to not even join next time. So that is the dialogue impact. Joining it without knowing, knowing what the benefit is as a And not joining is not joining also is as a Again, two as patterns will come together and you have to find another way. This is only a thing of managers. No, I am not a developer. I am a QA. Why should I look into these graphs that the managers play with? Or managers also will think, why should I disturb a developer or a QA or someone? I can only talk about it, I can talk about this, I can, hey, we need high velocity, that's enough information, I can give the reports to the client and that's it. No way, that's the biggest as I like. I have a very great example there, <laughs> but I will come and we will be on that side. So, what are the quick ways to identify that? If someone is low on energy, how you can identify it? Is low on so, what is negative impact which is it is having on teams, organizations, clients can actually completely kill or hinder the benefits of agile practices and it will reduce your success rate. Always you plant something for 4 sprint ending up in 10 sprints or 6 or 5. Why? Why not think 3 if you plant 4? And everyone says it is not possible, it will have slow to decrease. It is not, not possible. But Basic thing is, we are not questioning why we are always going beyond something. You no know, questioning is as I like Taking it as a team norm that we are always going to take more sprint is a dialogue. You will see that success which you thought to be achieving after one month or four sprint, it is now a bit far to you. Just as a finance person also I can say, if a final invoice is coming after fifth sprint, instead of fourth sprint, then you know how much interest you lost from that. So your success, your money is away if you are, you can identify by that as I like to are there. Decrease productivity. If someone is forcing you to sit in this session and you know you will be not so active. Similarly, if you are joining some event, you don't know why you are joining it, you will be not active participant. Your productivity will be less and you will feel I am not at 100%. If you do something and you are not at 100%, you will morale will go down. Rework, obviously, I am not productive, my reward will be my award. Disengagement, dissatisfaction. You do half hearted something, it will be a result of it. So, as I like pattern is first identification of as I like pattern is you are doing something, but you feel not 100% in doing that. Obviously, projectives will increase. Everything is projectives. Adaptability, flexibility, change is coming, but you take it. If you take it, spring velocity will be impacted. Again, to as I like And you have to see if you do take one decision, I will not take change request. If you take a change request, in both the cases, you are doing it wrong. And that is as I like First of all, the most loved topic of this software world is bugs. We like and we did small. <laughs> so, bugs are something like that. Why it's different from user stories? If bugs are different from user stories, then why we are giving story points to those? Bugs need story points so we see if they are not going to need story points. One thing is story point what it is. Story point is a measurement unit and there are many many measurement units. This measurement unit is used to measure the user stories. Let's use another measurement unit to measure our bugs. But bugs are and story points are different. Normally if it is your code, software or website Client will not pay you for the bugs you create. But he will pay you or she will pay you for the user stories you create. So both are different things. Let's have different parameters to measure both the things. That's distinguishment. 
if these are two different things, you cannot measure with the same parameter. Aeroplane speed and bike speed, if having the same parameter, to measure their speeds and effectiveness is wrong. Might be from very related example, but bus and story point needs separate tracking mechanism. Instead of story point for bugs, you cannot do it. Now bugs are created. If I click something here in my session, if I get this camera, if I'm coming out, then I should own it because I go. Similarly, I created some bugs. I have to own those bugs. So that ownership if we have, if I coded something and it's coming because of my code, and now let's make it more generic. If my team coded something, and now these bugs are coming because of that, let's make it more generic. If my company coded something, delivered something to the client, and it is because of that, and I own it, I'm the owner of my company. Owner of the company means I own every responsibility of my company. I'm the owner of fixing it. So that is the responsibility which should be distributed. But this is not a measurement matrix. Measurement matrix will be different. Fixed time approach for the works. I think one of my colleagues, who said many of you must be uh, aware of his name, I had a very heated argument with him. I said, we were talking about estimating works. And I said, why can't I estimate the bugs? That was my question. And he said, exactly estimating bugs means exactly <coughs> fixing the bugs. Because bugs are not having any scope. You cannot estimate something which is not even having a scope. And there is a bug, it can be content issue. And we are very able to know it's a UI issue, CSS files are not centralized or something. Right? Initially, you can analyze a few issue or content issue, but you are not 100%. It can be something like a infra issue, catch issue. Right? You even don't know what the scope of it. But when you are creating a feature, you know the scope of it. So you can estimate. Bugs are not having most of the time no scope. So you cannot estimate. And knowing exactly the estimate of it means completely fixing. <coughs> so you do you have you have to have fixed time approach for the bugs. I will give my eight hours to top ten bugs, top five bugs, or top two bugs. Prioritize your bug list in your backlog. Separate backlog you can create for bugs and have a priority sequential list for that and dedicate 10% or 20% of the time to top 10% bugs, 20% bugs, or whatever can be done. Might be only you are able to fix one bug without 10% of the spend time. So that is one of the way to allocate some fixed slot for your bugs. So you can estimate it, so you can know how many bugs you can fix. Now, what is the bug matrix? You can use values. Bug matrix is something, what is the percentage of bugs appearing with time? If you have 100 bugs and 900 features, it is a 10% issue. Next time, you have 15% issue. Open bugs, closed bugs, 5%. So you have to measure the percentage of bugs in comparison to the features you have to That is one of the matrix. And you can have more. <laughs> one great example here I would like to show. Consider you are driving a car and you have to go 100 miles. <clears throat> when you are going 100 miles, at that point of time, you lost your track, right? Now, in 100 miles, you could have traveled in 2 hours, 50 miles per hour, and your average would be 50 miles. Now, what had happened? You lost the track, and somehow someone guided you, and you find a highway. Not a driving very fast, because highway is mean for that, right? Now, you're driving very fast, and you covered 150 miles because you lost your normal path, so you have to cover more kilometers. So you covered 150 miles in not 0.5 hours. Someone can say my mileage is now, my average is now 60 miles per hour. And I could have gone to the normal path, I could have achieved only 50 miles per hour. But that's not the case. You can use more time, you can use more fuel to reach to the same destination. So fixing work is something like if you say, if you give story points to it, and you feel that you have achieved 100 story points because you fixed, say 20 bucks, it is the same kind of illusion you are creating for us. It's not the actual output which you are writing for. It's something the side substitutes which are coming and you have to find a way to get rid of this. Daily is better. I'm jumping to the next topic. And one thing, as seen most common brand, you will see in your DSM, you will end up adding more and more parties. Sometimes client will say, I want to join. Sometimes you will say, I want to join. Sometimes other stakeholders will say, I want to join. You have more and more and more stakeholders, even when they are silent, they are giving some restriction. Example, if a client is there, and you end up saying, 
uh, some developers say, I have a problem. And client is able to hear it. He's hearing that tomorrow they believe me. Client, and someone is saying, I have a problem. And they do not understand it or understand it, but they have some unconsciously thinking, is my delivery going on fine? So, what will the impact the speaking editing, the developer will meditate in sharing the problem? The client is there. So, choose very, very consciously who will be the participant of the case. If, and Padel says, no, do nothing. If someone is still wants to join it, add that person, and that is the at add the option. And make sure that person is not always joining your base. Sometimes that person can join to see how the working of it, but not should the regular parties. We have to make that. Asking communication. Why is stakeholder joining? Why client wants to join? They want to have daily updates. See the objective of that person who wants to join. And try to serve that object. Asking communication, give after DSM some reports or create some reports. Automatically, you can generate auto reports in the system. AI is there, okay, so many of the things. You can have asking products communication for the non essential people who are in the call and even give and solve their objective. First of all, many of us say, Why we are doing 15 minutes? Why is we are doing calling it a daily stand up, not sit up or something? It is calculated on the basis of our biological fact. You know that normally without getting tired, normally can stand up to 15 minutes. And then the mind and body will have some tiredness. It is not that they, will, they can extend 24 hours, but the tiredness will start happening after 15 minutes. It's a biological strength. Now you know that's the 15 minutes logic. That's why we say always do 15 minutes. Then you are into the topic also. Another person says that on the top high level discussion you can do in 15 minutes. The most high level discussion and meeting can be of 15 minutes. Then you do deep dive. So there are many logic. Now accept this expectation clear with the people. Why is 15 minutes? Why we are asking three questions only? Block is what we have done yesterday, what we are doing tomorrow. Why do this thing? So it is the expectation you have to decide, and you will see there will be many, many people supporting you. Not only the scrum master saying, hey, it's 15 minutes, let's complete it 15 minutes. Everyone will say that. And you will be so glad to know that at many point of time, people, you need to not join. No manager, no scrum master, and even they can skip the DSM, Steam's DSM. They can own it, they can run it, they can discuss among themselves. Because it's a technical problem, they are going to help each other. So that expectation if you are able to set among the people, they will run it. So that is the expectation and communication you should set in the channel for any system. Encourage active participation. You will know, join some PSM random layers from master manager. And you will see that who is not so active. Sometimes what's happening, only TLN. Scrum Master or PO or PM and many such nations are talking among themselves. And uh, people are joining and leaving and not talking about much. You will see who are not happy. Work with that. Don't just don't blacks. Try to understand what are the blockers of that person. You have to increase active participation participation of everyone. Otherwise, it will be draining others' energy. So, like after this session, I would like to have our energy and questions from everyone. Otherwise, who will be asking on few people will be only asking question that person's energy will be reduced when others are not. Similarly, if in DSM any meeting is someone is very fast not speaking, you will see it is draining the average energy of that conversation. So active participation is required, not doing it as a element. It's not a status support meeting. Nowhere. Give that confidence. So give that confidence. Give that confidence that it is not a status good meeting. If you say something, it is not recorded in a way that your progress is less or It is not coding in that way. So I think I'll I'll quickly take the next slide. How to ensure loss of meetings unimpacted? Our biggest reward from Agile or I would say sprint is sprint loss. Client says, hey, you have to achieve 60 story points average sprint. And that is they are only checking something. But let's see how Agile interpretations are really impacting. We end up only engaging maximum TL or TA and many such senior developer technology we use in backlog refinement. Only some section of the people is assigned for backlog refinement. No, that's not. You have to engage all the stakeholders in backlog. You have to plan how you can do it. You can distribute one ticket based person, second ticket based person.
but we have to engage everyone. That is also the initial level from where we can ensure how high velocity can be achieved that people are, in, people are engaged from the day one. So, speech learning, I think we end up doing what? We end up doing that sprint learning meeting is more about what we have to do instead of how we have to do. What we have to do should be in the backup plan, not in the sprint plan. You have to do, you have to brainstorm how you are going to do it, divide the story point, or decide the story point, divide the user story, bring the epic, all these things we do. And everyone should be participants. If you are not the participant of it, why you should be com remain committed to it? There is a developer who is not even a sprint planning meeting member and he's given some stories. He did not even part of, part of the discussion to add any story point to that. Why you should we remain committed to it? The commitment is start with involvement. Now, I will say, just raise your hand if you ever use Spring Boat in your space. Great. I love you. So, Sprint Goal is one of the least used feature of Azure and biggest Azure anti-pattern. You are not aligned. See, there is an army. You just say, Jai Ho, or if you say, Vande Mat, and that gives so much energy. The Sprint is also about Sprint Goal. Sprint Goal needs to be decided. <coughs> if you say, we are going to deliver the login page, I am not saying that will give so much energy like the army is aligned to it, but it will give you the focus. What are you focusing on? It will avoid you diverting. You are going like you are driving from here to home. You know you are going to home. Your goal is to go home. If you are not aligned to go home because you are, because something and his spouse is tagging on you, then you will say, okay, let me go to that friend, that you will be diverted. Similarly, your sprint goal needs to be decided. Decide your sprint goal, the team has in the sprint planning meeting, and that will align the team to remain focused. DOR. You start your sprint, but you don't know what is the essential elements before you start your sprint. Your sprint is in progress, designs are not there, weapons are not there, client is not aware what is the acceptance is. Even they are not adding to acceptance criteria, right? You have to prepare a chart, customize it, agree on it with every stakeholder. Before we adopt anything in sprint, this is my DOR. This is team's DOR. And that DOR definition of ready is must to ensure you don't end up in between. But be flexible. Something you end up which is not ready, be clear. If it is not ready, the DOR is not fulfilled for it. We are now ready to accept it, half fulfilled if it is not. Failure can be also you are not aware of. DOR helps you. You know these stories can fail. And spin backup should not be regular change. But you know, I am the manager, right? I can talk in terms of money. If client is giving me money, then why should I say no to you? But team is saying, no, no, those people will be bad. And we are aligned towards it. Who is that? Our manager is saying, take the money. I said the change of this. Team is saying, no, no, those people will be bad. And in the end, you are going to make an KPI and promotions on the basis how many story points I achieve or something. Both are agile. If something is coming to you in agile, you have to be adaptable and accept it and see how can you make it work differently next time. Set up your change control practices. You have to set up if it is coming at this time, try to know the reason why suddenly, why not before it. Now, next time, set up a norm with your time. Okay, we are ready to take it up, but at this present time, we have to also see how we can be more plant towards it. Show them the benefits of it. That is the change control practice. If you want to do it, very good, very good. Regular sprints, retrospective meetings. Retrospective meetings, if uh, it is hard impact or loss, I talk all about this, but it is possible to follow. Not from the day. You know what is going to work, but is it easy to do it? Now, laptop is shutting down in between. What we do, I, for next time if I go, I have to fix this problem. Right? Might be my laptop problem, might be something. If I don't fix it, it will keep coming in the book. And can it be similarly in his friends? You have to understand what is not working so But having not the realization of it is not working. Just do the that And that relation will get to ending. It's okay to fail. But having the relation is not working. Mini button. 
Initially, I do remember nearly 12 years, 11 years back or 12 years back, when I was enjoying the waterfall, it was giving me the water type of feeling, I'm really standing in waterfall. I was hitting as well. Why my boss at that time? I'm seeing boss because I felt that that this is my boss. So I'm somewhere 11 or 12. But why my boss is asking me that? What is this? How can I avoid it? So my mindset was not really. Don't push anything on someone. That Embrace the asylum mindset. What is the benefit? If you have to be salesman at some time, if you are selling something, if you are not selling the benefit of it and just asking people to do it, how they do it. You have to ensure that agile pattern is one of the things when you end up not telling them the benefit and just asking them to do it. Agile is never simple. There are so many certifications for everyone, there are so many certifications for team, why? Everyone should be knowing the benefit. Second thing is involve every from the table. If you have a person and a team who is not doing anything, just give them anything which cannot be used to that level. But involve every. Iterating incremental approach and many technology you might be aware that you can involve every from the table. If you are involving them from the table, they will be involved. Even if they are doing something, the documentation which client is not doing, but sitting idle or not in all being involved in the table is not that is the agile This we discussed a moment, a bit quickly. But mini waterfall can also be avoided by ensuring that you have collaborative sprint planning. Time box activities to plan things on time. Like just my partner shared your time. <laughs> so that I have time box my slide, right? So I am now going to be faster. But time box is going to help to have all other sessions on time. That is required. So you have to see if you time box and alert people how much time they are left, they can adapt. So time boxing is another way how you can end up messing up the things in there where suddenly half slides are done. No, no, you go. So that is the way proactively inform the people how much time you left. And time boxing is required. But as we just discussed, everything we are discussing is not going to happen on the day one. We have to ensure that the path of agile is regularly reviewed, inspected, and proactively, reactively, whatever terminology you want to use, but it should not be never neglected. Scrum master full potential. Okay, Scrum master hardly they have to facilitate few meetings. They can do also few other things, but they can't do the requirement gathering. Why they can't do uh, some more projects? Uh, might be their twenty, uh, ten or twenty team members. They can still get more projects because Scrum Master can have band, but no, we are not using their full potential. That's the end. First of all, you have to understand. Doesn't mean you have to do Scrum Master certification in all the all of you, but you have to just understand what we can do it. Promote self-organization in the team. That is also part of coaching them. Facilitating communication and collaboration. So I will just cover a few three topics in together. The Scrum Master role is not limited to letting them know what to do. Also letting them know why we are doing it, coaching them, mentoring them. And you know coaching is a full-time job. It's a full-time job and asking someone to do something is easier. But making that person ask other person to do it with the same intention is hard. You have to create mini Scrum Master in your team and that will take a lot of it. That is the full potential of Scrum Master. Six support for organization. If organization is asking for more projects, there will be the benefits what you can achieve by giving the full potential of Scrum Master. Even cancer. Not this session. This is something like uh, you must have heard retrospective is the most impacted Scrum session. Most of the time we say, let's club to retrospective uh, or do it monthly even when we have a weekly sprint, what will happen? That if you are doing something wrong, you will end up doing a minimum of 4 sprints and then will be together so much data and people will keep forgetting also. Have the clear object, what is the benefit of it? Don't let them people just instruct, you don't end up instructing them, just join the sprint uh, retro meeting, that's not the responsibility of some other, they have to let them know what the benefit of it. And you can schedule an event in the calendar, right? It's just another, simply like that, establish the clear objective. Not doing it is a 
just asking someone to follow something without letting them know about it. Active participation, we discuss a bit about it. It comes here because it will encourage people to say we have to do that. You should hear this terminology when something is failing, people are saying, hey, we will discuss it. It's not like that. That means something, hey, let's meet outside. It is something like we can figure out a solution in that. Or at least have a realization, common understanding, understanding and synchronization of fit of the problem in that. Time loss. Like this event, a which still needs to be time loss. Because time is most important, money, human beings are. Prepare and share and identity. Retro is something you can prepare a retro code, share that retro code a bit before, let the people add their problems before the retro meet. You can innovate how they can optimize their time. You can share what is the DSM before the team is starting their first time. Planning meeting, grooming meeting, everywhere you can let them know what's the objective and if there is some change in that object. Be assertive. Now, if I am going to take more time, they have to be assertive with me. Similarly, you have to be assertive. When you are, it's not about Scrum Master, it's about everyone. Assertiveness is not about the Scrum Master needs to be assertive. Every participant is the force behind the SIR, then only SIR works. Encourage full of discussion. You keep doing that. <coughs> no, no, no. We are having retrospective, but is anyone looking behind? After that retrospective, what are the action items we have taken here? If no, we are going to display that one. Because they have to see the output. If you keep complaining, electricity is not coming, electricity department is not giving you back the electricity, electricity then what will happen? You will change the electricity connection to the private provider or solar panels. Right? Similarly, team will do that. Culture of collaboration. It's not one person single. It's like a ship. Everyone needs to take care of the responsibility. Agile methods. It's not the girlfriend of only managers, right? Or boyfriend of only managers. What I am saying is because I might have used not so commonly used terminology, but what's happening? Agile metrics till date is kept into the secret books of metrics. How many of you are aware of nearly five top agile metrics? Similarly, there are 10 and 20 codes which can be used, and Jira is automatically given. But managers are just keeping with themselves because it's a hard to make them everyone understand how the bug variations are happening, how the reopen reports are happening, how the closure rates are happening, what is the survival rate of each thing. So, educate the team, have them understand the purpose of each matrix, conduct regular reviews and discussion. If it is Last velocity, it should not be hey, achieved high velocity, not that you know, discuss with that reason. Define metrics over time. Don't plan something like in you know, a one day you are going to achieve from 20 to 20 points to 50 or 60. It is an incremental change. Misrepresent. Client needs higher story points, let's give works story points, or give higher story points in sprint planning. That's a misrepresentation. You are keeping yourself in illusion. Before the client, you are saving that we offer. Key takeaways are there any patterns negatively impact all? You can realize it. If you are doing anything in Azure and you don't understand it, you are displacing yourself by reducing your problem. Avoid storage points to bugs and you can use fixed time tools for bugs and many other things. Avoid inviting everyone in the meeting. But not for the session, everyone should be in the session. But uh, for meetings, you have to ensure who is going to contribute to what. If you don't understand and just keep adding, that is going to distract the tools stakeholders. DOR. Everywhere you can apply, what is the definition of great? Like I came here, I have to make sure I have a laptop, connect an app. So you can apply this concept basically in a separate one. What is the minimum checklist you need to ensure that ticket is ready even to be considered as planning? Sprint planning, mini protocols from the day one, not the all team members are involved, that is the mini protocol. You have to find another place, testers are starting automating the, start writing the beer test before the code is even. If you have clear concept, acceptance criteria, why can't you take it? Understand and embrace the scrum master. Mini scrum master should be there. 
and everyone should be advocating what should be done instead of only scrum master. It's not happening, you have to educate people. Give that energy to them. Be firm on agile side. Sometimes you have to ensure that people are not understanding. At that time they join and later have them understand. I will give one more example regarding the agile matrix. Consider you are driving a car and there is a speedometer. You are looking into it and then you are increasing and decreasing your speed. But as a matrix, what concept we are using? Your guardians are looking into the speedometer and telling you on the form he drives slow. You are not looking into the speedometer, your guardians are looking into it. He drives fast. Similarly, as a matrix, team who is doing the actual work is not looking into the agile matrix. Someone else is saying, hey, you are going slow, drive fast. We are working too fast, drive slow. So, as I matrix actually, like a speedometer who is driving, should be looked into by that person's software. Any question? How much time do you have? Last one. At least one or two? What is the difference between a scrum master and a project manager? First of all, the project manager terminology is used for a past time. It is something like project manager and it clubs sometimes everything. You can even say a project manager also can do the scrum master. But the big difference is Agile use different technologies for every role and response. Like a sprint, velocity, everything, right? Now scrum master is added to the responsibility of coach. Managers previously was thought to be the technology coach. They are managing the coach. But scrum master is actually master of this art and can coach others. The coaching aspect is one of the biggest. So it's a scrum master moment to the regular startup things or the project. So or can be part of the I will tell my uh, project uh, experience, my portfolio experience, I'm having support portfolio here. We have 17 projects and nearly 25 team members are there and we are doing uh, 30 minutes BSM and discussing 17 projects in 30 minutes in 25 team members. And no one, no manager is facilitating. We have a rotation of 25 members, one by one, sequentially facilitate them. So the person who is just facilitating one event is not the, that's it, the role and responsibility of that. Any look at, take a small, small pieces of scrum master role, and that should be distributed among the team. But the coaching remains with the scrum master because they are the master. All the responsibility can be and should be delegated. I don't know if I to answer all of you. But you will have the authority to ask the community of the staff and so on that. And then we can understand what we're working on if there are new doctors and to get a the final ETA, like what I said, how far is someone? Actually, ETA is something actually time of right. And ETA is the responsibility of the person who is working on Why we need a actually uh, BSM to discuss even ETA? Your GDA ticketing system or another ticketing system can have a train to write the ETA. And each can commit their ETAs via ticketing system. And in the BSM, they just discuss what they have done in the test. Might be a failure. The what they are going to do it would be fixing that failure. And their blocker is their turn Now you can say two days ago, might be more. Now EPA is changed and they have to update the EPA on the data. Now it will auto reflect all the metrics, what is the actual metrics. If we have a hopper to absorb, they are going to say verbally, what is the drop uh, You will not able to picturize how it is going to impact. And if you are having 20 team members, 10 team members, and everyone, every ticket you are asking verbally there, and then doing all the manual the time thing, then still has to be not They have to enter it manually in the ticketing system and they have to acknowledge what is impacting it with the system. Yes. The next session has put a lot of students in the degree development division and I'm quite sure that why there isn't enough crowd. But once we have the recording on it, I know we have to ask this open question. I have to ask this as a topic. Just cut that. Just cut that.
Business by doing targeted campaigns with personalization and segmentations. So we are going to talk about Mate, Drupal, and then how to build those campaigns and how to deliver those campaigns. So but before we do that, yeah, you will have to bear with us. So because we are here, we will have to know a little bit about us as well. Uh, Abhishek. Uh, yeah. I am Abhishek Haiwal, and I am a solution consultant at Accelerant. And you can see we are Techno Film and Explorer. That's our second uh, second part. So basically, I work alongside with the uh, sales team and uh, to conduct discoveries and I help them to write some uh, RSPs and you know, some technical solutioning. And I work with uh, Pratik for you know, so exploring these uh, new technologies and then uh, you know, implementing them inside uh, our organizations. And you know, uh, we then uh, uh, you know, uh, conduct uh, growth plans and growth strategies. That's my role. Yeah, thank you, Vishik. So, yeah, I'm Pratik Jain. Uh, I, I work as a director of DXP services at Excelent. So, part of my role is to kind of grow our digital experience services, adopt new technologies as part of Excellent team. And yeah, so that's where we keep on exploring things like personalization, campaign studios, or uh, CDPs of the world, and the search solutions, AI driven search solutions, and so on and so forth are tied up with your overall digital experience platforms. So, and Today, before I get into the marketing automation side of things, right? I mean, I know, I mean, a lot of you know about why personalization should happen, right? I mean, why do you need personalized? I mean, everybody knows it. Uh, you, as, a, as a user, we all want that personalized experience from rents to feel special, right? I mean, to see the things that are relevant to us. That's the experience when you are maybe going to a Starbucks for a coffee, right? I mean, having your name on your cup, right? I mean, makes you feel special and then, hey, this is a personalized coffee for me, right? And we all need that. I mean, from rents time to time. Uh, for example, if you're using a news app, a news app recommends content based on your interest, your topics of your suggestion, you feel that you are getting served in the right manner. Similarly, a fitness app that suggests you uh, the, the exercises based on your fitness goals or your fitness level, right, is what would make you make your experience better overall in terms of the personalization and overall. So that's where again, and when businesses do that, not only the customer experiences becomes better, but also businesses get better as well in terms of more revenue um, and, and more loyalty in terms of when user cannot just go out that easily, right? So we all love that experience of having that personalized experience, right? But how do we do that? <coughs> what what are the various personalization strategies over here, right? So one by one, it's important to identify your customers and what they want, identifying who they are, where they are coming from, what kind of personalization they may be needing. For example, if you are browsing for an e-commerce website, right? I mean, you may want a product recommendation over an email, but let's say you are going to a boutique shop, right, to buy a dress for yourself or, or a suit, right? I mean, you may need more of, of a personalized special consultant who kind of understands your needs and suggests you the things that you need over there, right? Uh, similarly, analyzing customer journeys. We all interact with various digital touch points from your phone, SMSs, emails, your iPads, different devices, and so on and so forth, right? It's important to understand where your customers are and where you can take them from stage one to stage two and so on and so forth. The different stages that you may want them to take from the uh, journey point of view. And then define your personalization criteria. What, on what criteria are you going to personalize? Sometimes you may want to personalize based on their behavioral needs, right? Their, their browsing pattern, their purchasing history, so on and so forth, right? So analyze that data. Uh, but obviously, uh, a word of caution over here, analyze that data by being non-intrusive and in a transparent manner and in an ethical manner, right? I mean, because personalization, there's a downside when you're too personalizing it too much, right? I mean, let's say if you're going to a, your D-Marts or any other uh, shopping mall, right? And then they send you a very, very personalized recommendations, you would be freaked out, right? Okay, I just bought this product, right? I mean, why are they just sending me this other 
recommendation. So you have to be mindful about that and be ethical about the data that you are using to personalize the experiences. And then segmented, obviously segmented based on segmentation is nothing but just the list, right? And these are the users who are uh, in the first step of their journey or they, they come from Pune, right? I mean, the Pune people like this kind of uh, uh, food versus somebody coming from a different city, right? And so on and so forth. So identify your patterns. It could be based on demography, age, gender, uh, their behaviors, their purchasing history and all, right? And segment your audience accordingly. And then start personalizing. So personalize the content now that you have identified the touch points, you have identified what data to use, you have identified the segments and all, you can start personalizing the content. But at the same time, personalization is never perfect. I think all of us have experienced it from different brands, it is never going to be perfect. It's a journey and it's important when we, as a digital change makers, when we are building those products or journeys, right, I mean, we identify that, it's going to be an acquisition. So collect feedback, iterate upon it and then come back on it again. So, so that's what, uh, I'm coming to the topic because I've like talked about something else and I'm bringing it back to the marketing automation side of it because marketing automation plays a very very important role in building those personalization journeys. Uh, without it, it will be like kind of a disjointed journey. Let's say if you're receiving an email campaign, right? I'm sure you are using Amazon, Flipkart, Mintras, right? To order something and then let's say you've abandoned a cart, right? I mean you just added some product and you're like, hey, I'm not going to buy it anymore. Next day, a day later, you receive an email, hey, by the way, you have this product in your cart, use this discount coupon of 10% and then go back to work. Okay, so that's all the part of the marketing automation side of the things and you can automate it based on various different factors. It can also help you target leads effectively because when you know a little bit more about the customers, it will help you do that kind of lead targeting and identify the strong leads because a lot of these marketing automation, I'm not sure how many of you have used any, any marketing automation software. Uh, what are HubSpot, Motic, Marketo? Marketo, right? Okay. Perfect. So yeah, a lot of these, right? All of these actually comes with the scoring as well, right? I mean, you can assign scores to your lead so that that's one way to segment your users and then build those targeted journeys for them, right? And then when you do all of it, right? I mean, it results into a higher conversion rate. Uh, uh, and enhances employee productivity by that. By that I mean, uh, it reduces the manual effort. You don't have to kind of do it again and again and do a very individual hyper personalized, you can do that automatically using, if you set up your tools rightly, you can kind of reduce a lot of your manual efforts over there as well. Uh, drive and optimize your growth, when you have the right marketing automation set up, it also bridges the gap between your sales and marketing. And not as an organization, but for the customers that you are building these products, it kind of, it's important to understand how their sales team is structured and how their marketing team is structured to give them the marketing automation solution. Yeah. And again, in the end, obviously it will help reduce the, uh, or improve the customer retention. And therefore, marketing automation is an integral, integral part of your digital strategy. It just cannot stay alone. It's it's not like uh, one other thing. It kind of talks to your CMSs. Could be anything, Google, uh, it, it, you can generate email campaigns, SMSs. It needs to be tied up with your analytics and the segmentation mm -hmm. tools. You can do segmentation with these marketing automation tools as well, but then they are, uh, other platforms which where you can do these kind of segmentations. So that uh, yeah, this is what we want to talk about and demo you as well, right? And then now, now that this context is set, why personalize personalization strategy, the role of marketing automation in delivering personalization strategies. Right? I want to take a segue and then talk about this particular case study. So recently we had a customer who who, had, who already had an e-commerce portal. They were just enabling small businesses, homeowners, for example, selling cookies from home and um, very, very non-technical folks and they wanted to sell their products online. So they built a SaaS product where each of those business owners get a SaaS portal where they can upload their products and sell it to their customers. But our customer also wanted to enable them by, with their marketing automation capabilities. So each of those customers or an e-commerce setup was tied up with a marketing automation tool which was Motic in our case. So we built a multi-tenant solution where one Motic is tied up with a one e-commerce instance per se in the multi-tenancy world and, and integrated them and, and it came with pre-configured campaigns, pre-configured templates uh, and integration with your e-commerce platform. So this is what we are going to demo you as well today where we talk about how we develop it and how you or anybody can use those Motic plugins and use it anywhere. Uh, uh, we, later we will talk about that we have open sourced it as well. Uh, you can use it for anywhere and then extend it as per your use case. Uh, but yeah, and we built it using Kubernetes and then uh, I'm not getting into the architectural setup of it, uh, just considering the time 
Uh, but then if anybody is interested in knowing about how we actually built it, uh, what was the architecture setup and things like that, I mean I would be happy to kind of talk about it after the session as well. Uh, over here, but yeah, this is a broad level architecture where you have each organization or each instance has its own databases uh, and they were all and then we had a, a, an application set up on Kubernetes to kind of spin up a new marketing automation interface just by like literally in a second with the push of a button you have your marketing automation system ready with the pre-configured templates in the context of the business that you are building. Yeah, so this is what it is, I mean, so we build this again. Uh, what we are going to show and talk about and I'm sure is going to do that is about the cart abandonment. Like the same similar the Mintra use case where you abandon a particular product or a cart by after editing it and then what's the journey, how it can be end to end optimized and, and connected with the Drupal commerce at the back end. And then these are the other various use cases that can be added to the same plugin or different use cases typically what well, this comes with the retail marketing or the e-commerce So yeah, uh, so that or do you uh, wish to talk about uh, the demo and then this is what we did just as an FI before we go to the demo. So we used Matic as a marketing automation tool. There was a Drupal as a CMS. We used Twilio's segment.io. So segment is a CDP solution. We will talk a little bit about it uh, at the end of the session. But then uh, yeah, it recently got acquired by Twilio. And then obviously enabling these only channels or various other channels, emails, SMSs and uh, social media and so on and so forth. So we were able to kind of yeah. Just when you were enabling this happened. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, over to you, Bishay, to kind of uh, walk us through the demo, what exactly we did, and then take it from there. Thanks, Pratik. Before we deep, I mean, you know, dive into the into demo, and I have steal some lines from uh, you know, today's keynote uh, from Mr. Shirdamka. So, if we recall, uh, they said that uh, this generative AI, uh, that small businesses will use this generative AI to, you know, uh, to create a piece of software to uh, to solve their, their their some challenges or problems that uh, they are facing on this uh, uh, their, their in their businesses. So exactly what uh, these plugins and uh, we are basically calling it in these accelerators. So these accelerators are series of plugins. Which are which when enabled in a modic setup will create some take an automated journey of uh, you know uh, market, retail market market years uh, <clears throat> to address few of the use cases that we have you know uh, previously uh, looked at. So we are really going to demo about the abandoned cart, but uh, there are other other use cases that can be utilized and can be created uh, or contributed on on, on those plugins. Uh, so let's dive into our demo. So for this demo, uh, we have created this marketplace. Yeah. Just like in the demo. <laughs> no surprises. This was planned. This was planned. My life demo is wanting is just to be. So uh, we have you know, done this uh, website for this demo. So this we this is the e-commerce portal for retail, uh, you know, branding, uh, retail branding. That's a few million lot of visitors are visiting in this website, and you know they are performing a lot of actions. For example, they are just moving around the website, browsing through the products, and to feel of those users are adding their product to the cart. So, let's start this demo with the story, the story of Mr. Joe. So, Mr. Joe. In this uh, website and added this product to the cart. So when this product is added uh, to the cart now, somehow <coughs> some other reasons he did not complete his uh, uh, this purchase and just left the product into the cart and and never turned up. So this is a very normal scenario in a, in a business and especially in a retail business when users are coming, leaving the products in the cart or even into the fish list, right? And 
they uh, do not come back until they we need uh, you realized or uh, you know reminded uh, reminded about these cases and in that time you, you, we cannot expect that this would be hundred percent it wasn't any any conversion it is a plus to our sales so let's uh, you know uh, before you know uh, continuing this story we understand how this setup is done these are Admin interface. This is our admin interface where um, no, uh, we are configuring a modding plugin. Basically. We have some you know, pre defined segments, and these segments are defined at the application level, I mean, uh, this uh, you know, e commerce portal level. And all these values uh, that we have shown in the drop down are basically coming from the module itself. So we are, what we are doing, we are trying to sync uh, these segments to the segments that we already defined in, uh, in this program. So that we know when we push the user data to module instance, so we can you know, map which uh, user should go uh, in which segment. So obviously uh, this thing uh, will be happening through a cross job, we can use a cross job, but uh, you know, for this job, for this, we have put this, uh, you know, push button there. This CTA, when, when I click this CTA, yeah. internet is working. Yes, <laughs> internet is working. So now when I you know, push this, uh, this CTA and uh, uh, this data is pushed to the modding instance. Ideally, it would happen on a cron job, but again, just for the demo purposes, it's yeah. just a button click to simulate the behavior. So, if we. They do it for context over here, so the idea was that context will get synced to the automatic yeah. instances automatically. Yeah, so, so, so Mr. Joe, uh, that you know, if we recall from this story, that Mr. Joe has added the you know, product into the cloud and then that the content has been synced to the modern instance. Similarly, uh, when this uh, modic plugin is installed, uh, this it does three, three things. First, it creates a segment. Uh, that is called dependent card segment. It also creates a you know custom uh, object uh, that is called products. So basically, uh, the idea is alongside the user information that is being pushed to the model, we also sending the product details. So we make a correlation with uh, with the you know abandoned card data that been you know uh, uh, left at the uh, e-commerce site. That could, could be correlated and you know sent through the reminder emails. So to you know to have this information at the model level, we you know that we use uh, this custom uh, object and created our entity product entity. And this product entity is only for the information that is you know sent by the uh, e-commerce portal. And then the thing to note is that these are like you know like temporary storages just to run the campaigns. Obviously, you don't want to store. Your products data in your marketing automation tool, this is just to run the campaign uh, uh, intermittently. And uh, the last thing that it, it does is creates an automatic abandoned card uh, reminder that is, uh, that is campaign. So, this abandoned card reminder campaign is uh, created by this, uh, you know, uh, this plugin on uh, by this plugin only. So, in this entire journey, retailers and small business business owners, which has you know, uh, uh, no, which do not have sufficient resources to hire a marketing team or uh, you know the engineering team to run or create these uh, you know uh, scenarios or use cases for them. So the idea is, is uh, you know for, for these accelerator is to create such or identify uh, identify uh, such use cases. And uh, enrich this uh, plugin so that when you enable it, you have a set of uh, you know uh, templates already 
are visible to the system. And uh, you know, utilized by these uh, retailers. Yeah. So this is the setup. Uh, how this, you know, uh, once you enable the plugin, uh, so what it does, all these, uh, these we, uh, you know, uh, so these three things is all we have seen that uh, uh, this, what, what this plugin is doing. So now let's get, come back to our story. So Mr. Liu once uh, you know, added uh, the card, did not turn up, and now uh, they are part of uh, this modding system through that uh, API data push. Okay. Before that, uh, let's see this segment also. Now currently if you see, there is no contacts. And, and this is because we haven't run uh, a problem job, I mean, we haven't updated these segments. And these segments is again is updated by a piece schedule from your which is uh, it is not configured with here, but uh, we can do it by running one command. So we already configured like anybody who has a product associated with them, that means they are the abandoned card segment. So typically Montag has its own cron job. So uh, yeah, we are just going to simulate that cron job by running this command and the contact yeah. should get added to the segment automatically. So this command is uh, basically Modding segment update, right? When, this, when I did this, when I done this, you can see that one contact is not that clearly visible, but yeah, it says that one total contact to be added. Right? And now let's go back to the this. When we refresh this page, now we can see uh, one contact uh, is added to this particular segment. When I click this one, now Mr. Joe and we is there. Now Mr. Joe is part of this segment. Right? And the idea is when next time this uh, you know like this campaign from your program, Mr. Joe would receive an email, a reminder email uh, with the uh, you know the card data that we left inside the their his card, right? And we try to convince Mr. Joe to come back to the site and make the purchase. Again, this should again happen to a con con job, but uh, on this demo, I mean, we are just executing the campaign which can be done using yeah. interface or a cron job, but it will automatically run based on the campaign that we have defined uh, for them. So, I just, uh, you know, the command is triggering the campaign. Let's go back to the slides. Now, let's check the email. But yeah, now, I'm sure you just received an email, right? A few seconds ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is, yeah. So this is this is an email that uh, Mr. <coughs> has, you know, uh, received. Now there are two conditions. Either Mr. Pio will totally ignore this email or they might read. There is chances that uh, Mr. Pio would read his uh, email. Whatever the mysterious reason would respect it. So let's say I go with uh, the second decision and I read the read Mr. Joe has that you know this is me. Now you can see uh, the product information is there and the email and there is a checkout button. So now clicking on this checkout button you uh, should go to the marketplace. Now, once again, I come back to the campaign. So, if you look at this campaign, so the first step for abandoned uh, card uh, contacts that means the user which have been added to this segment, this campaign would take care uh, the data uh, from the, uh, from that segment only. The second is the first reminder email that we have already seen that uh, the first reminder email is sent. Now the user has opened his, his email, right? Uh, Mr. Joe has already uh, read this email, right? Now uh, because he has already uh, read, he, he read that email, this, uh, set after 48 hours, right? If Mr. Joe do not complete their purchase, right? This 
uh, you know, this campaign will, uh, you know, recognize this, this action and will send a, a second reminder email to Mr. Duke after 48 hours. So let's say Ms. R. Mr. Theo is a good customer and they complete their checkout. I am not going to use my credit card. Let's just catch on the <laughs> Yes, completing Mac, this purchase. Yeah. So now, uh, the Mr. Joe has completed his purchase, and that is the intention of that, uh, you know, our marketing campaign. Now, what's happening after that? So, Mr. Joe, uh, <coughs> if we look at this segment again, do you notice that, uh, that one that there is no contact now? And it is because Mr. Joe has completed the product. There is no abandoned uh, product in their car. He shouldn't receive uh, the, uh, you know, these marketing emails again when, the, when that uh, non job runs. Because uh, we do not want to flood a lot of emails from uh, in his, uh, Mr. Joe's email box. So this ends uh, the, you know, the intention as well as uh, target of this particular uh, 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 this campaign. Right. So, yeah, I mean, as we saw, right, I mean, this is just an example of how abandoned cart happen, how these segmentations are getting created automatically, and then how you can basically run and execute these campaigns. I mean, you can obviously configure it based on the template, the information that you want to show sure along. Uh, the idea that we had was that it's not just tagged up with Drupal, it's a modic plugin you can have. It's a Shopify or WooCommerce based uh, e-commerce platform or it could be anything else, right? So if you have these plugins, you can get started immediately. You can, you can, you can continue to add more templates to it uh, to have these things ready and enable uh, the e-commerce or the retail customers, right? So uh, go back to the presentation slides as well. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, like these are the few screenshots that you saw as part of uh, the, the demo that Abhishek showed about. We also went ahead with one more step. So this is what's very straightforward. I'm sure like a lot of you may have done and, uh, uh, this kind of a use case, right? I mean, we also thought that how we can like do more hyper personal, right? What else do we need to know about those users, right? And that's where CDPs come into the place. So CDP as a customer data platform is a platform where you use and build the fuller customer profile or fuller user profile, right? They may be interacted from various sources. Let's say you have a user gave an email address on website, but a phone number on a mobile app, right? How do you know that these two users are not two different but same? So a lot of the CDP platforms, once the data is ingested into them, they help you unify the data and build a singular profile. And now you know a little bit more about those users. When that happens and you can enrich, I mean, you can even integrate with third party apps to enrich the data uh, or more information about them and then build a, a fuller profile which enables you to do a further granular personalized campaign. So uh, it could be about, uh, yeah, this is the specific product that this particular user buys every month. I'm sure you have your grocery list. You do it pretty much every month or so, right? I mean, that this is on some, maybe your shampoo in two months, but your conditioner in a month, right? Kind of an example. So knowing and creating your personalization criteria based on it. You, you don't want to recommend a shampoo like every 10 days when the, you don't know that, I mean, that shampoo is going to get consumed within two months, right? So you need to know that kind of information. So CDP helps you analyze that data, uh, build your segments so intelligently. So that's where you can get in and see their behavior step by step as well, where those users are and what you can do. And then again, in turn, trigger CDP segments to a marketing automation platform like Motec or Marketo or to be anything. So quickly, I don't think we have time to do the demo demo. Uh, for the CDP, we had it. I mean, anybody interested, we can like show it after the call or after the session. But then uh, I've been on doing many Zoom meetings, right? So that's why I'm saying after the call. So, but yeah, uh, I think Abhishek, you can just quickly walk through the screenshots. Yeah, sure. So, uh, if we recall our uh, last story, I was, you know, identify a customer with his name, Mr. Joe. So this is not an ideal situation, and uh, uh, within the sales funnel, this is this situation comes. After the acquisition, uh, you know, uh, part of the you know uh, of the funnel, yeah. But 
there, there is a much wider wider funnel exists before acquisition, right? That means a lot of users. Yeah, before this is being set up, I explained it. So, so in, uh, within an ideal situation, there are there are a lot of users on the top of the sales funnel, which are still being acquired. So, uh, as I explained in my uh, previous demo, that uh, a lot of visitors are coming on that website, right? But lots of visitors are just moving around the website, and but these visitors are, you know, uh, uh, leaving a lot, uh, you know, a lot of useful data, the foot footprints that can be used for our, you know, strengthen our marketing strategies. So, using a CDP, we can, you know, connect uh, like different different sources. These sources are touch points where uh, your customers are intended to land and do some sort of actions on uh, actions on uh, those platforms. We collect all the data uh, from all these sources. Those data get ingested into uh, the CDP system, and then uh, the CDP system sends this uh, these uh, you know uh, this uh, this profile data uh, to our destinations for for your know, activation. Uh, to run the activations on uh, on those uh, those data, those activations could be on their profile, behaviors, patterns, whatever uh, you know you can uh, uh, use them based on your marketing needs. So uh, this is this you know this screenshot you can see uh, all the visits uh, that is done uh, on our website. So uh, these are the you know, users that uh, somehow visited our, our portal. These are the uh, uh, events we are tracking for our you know uh, marketing marketing uh, campaign needs. Uh, we are tracking two events: the order complete and order. Uh, and so it's gonna be, we can grow as gradually as you want over yeah. here in the CDP, which is tricky to do in Motec. It's technically possible, but not suggested because it's not built for that kind of use case. But over here, you can have. As much data and as much tracking as you may want to have it for your users. Okay. These are the you know unified user profile. So these user profile is created through the visits from uh, you know from your different different sources. We collected the data. Then CDP system we consolidated those data and derive the useful information. So these are the information that we receive or uh, through and consolidated through the different different sources. And now we can easily identify those users, and those anonymous users are now can be identified through their profile. So, and these are just the profile data. These are the profile data that we are collecting uh, from Gish. So, what is the you know uh, benefit of you uh, you know getting this in your profile and you know, Utilizing those data, we can segment them. We can create audiences out of those data. We can identify, uh, you know, those uh, users, and you know, then uh, we can segment them based on their behaviors, and then we can run our marketing campaign accordingly. So, for example, what I did, but in this case, uh, we are building a building an audience, which is our prospect buyers. And what what condition that we are placing here is the visitors who has visited our uh, uh, you know uh, website at least at, at least once, and out of those users we are targeting only those users which has you know visited our product pages. So that means these users are our intended or potential clients. It's targeted well. So uh, using this you know this information now. Can be sent to any download system. For example, our in 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 our case model, we can build an integration to the CDP, and uh, that in, that integration would read all these audiences or segments uh, from here and all the users' data. And again, we can uh, you know create our own campaigns to address these users. Yeah. So in this case, I have choose I have given this entry view. No, just, uh, just uh, as a destination. Yeah, so, Thank you. Yeah, I just saw, right? I mean, our idea was to show and visualize this concept more than the tooling. So, entire tooling can be replaced with anything. 
But in this case, we use Drupal as a commerce background or e-commerce portal. We use Motec as a marketing automation tool and CDP. Uh, segment CDP, the other CDPs would be Julia, <coughs> Macria CDP, uh, or any other CDP that exists out there, right? Uh, yeah, so that was it, and then we also open source uh, the plugin, the, uh, the Motic side of the plugin that you can go and use. It currently has this abandoned card use case, so you can just go ahead and install it in your Motic, Motic profile. Uh, you may still need to connect it with your whatever e commerce uh, backend system is, be it Google Commerce or any other commerce system, so you will have to do that. Uh, yeah, it's available on GitHub, and this particular blog talks a little bit more about it technically, what is there. Uh, and how, how we actually build and what are the different components of that particular plugin apart from what we uh, uh, Yeah, so hopefully on time, but they have, uh, I don't know if we apply for it today, but uh, we would be happy to. Yeah. Uh, I have a related question, but not related to commerce. You guys are explaining on B2C. Commerce is no B2C, right? Can you give me some examples or your use cases what we have done in the past for B2B by using what? Because the reason I ask this question is also because when you go to a B2C, a user is logged in. So their profiling is already done, you already know the customer. But with the B2B case, most of the times an anonymous user will come. So probably you would have something like demand based to identify the user of the So is there a use case for the model for there as well? Uh, I'm trying to make one example, <laughs> but uh, so that, yeah, yes. So I think see, even as a B two B, right? I mean, when you are still talking to the people, right? I mean, it could be a group of people you may not know them. So in this case, obviously, you knew Joe because they were logged in, right? Uh, and that's where the CDPs can help. So what we did not show is like, I mean, even when you come on the website as an anonymous user, we did it by the way for Acquia.com. So there's a chatbot over there. Uh, if you have noticed on the like, typically what happens on that, right? I mean, and it's powered or not. So what happens is you download a white paper or you browse different sources, right? You share your unique identifier. Sometimes it could be email, sometimes you have to know them, or sometimes it could be just a browser cookie, right? And Motic injects a unique identifier on your browser. So, so that ID, with that ID, we basically powered the Motic, and then Motic again goes back to the chatbot and said, they, so first time if I enter, this is Pratik and downloading white paper. Even if you come on that browser, after a month, two months, it will say, hi Pratik, how can I help you? It won't say hi. I mean, typically when it doesn't know, it will say hi. Otherwise, it will say hi to think. So what I'm saying is that it's it's a B2B in a different sense. I mean, it's still an integrated customer, but also the other aspect that I can think of, I have not done it to be honest. But then uh, when let's say as an agency you target other agencies, right? So you can identify a group of people, segment them in a behavior where they can be targeted with a particular agency criteria. Let's say you let's say you're trying to open a new business for your uh, organization, right? So you can target CMO, CTO, so you need to know your champion, you need to know who is the decision maker, you need to know who, is the, who are the different technical stakeholders. Around. So you can map them, connect them through a unique identifier, could be a company or an organization, and then do the targeted campaign. Show this persona only the technical content, show this persona only the use cases that you are solving, right? So it's probably a made up example. I have not done it personally, but then we have run a few social media campaigns which are not necessarily targeted by Motic alone, but can be done. So again, this is just a data, and uh, you know, uh, based on the behavior, you can you know create your own audiences, right? Maybe in your you know B two B example, so these audiences you know your B two B customers, right? So uh, again, it is the data and your marketing strategies that would drive all the campaigns. And by the way, we recently had a very similar question where when we talk about marketing automations, always come out of, by default we see B two C. By default, okay, that's how we think, and then uh, but then there's a recent podcast uh, I will share with you probably uh, a little bit later where it talks about B2B marketing strategies. But yeah, that's um, yeah, basically, is it uh, support for the personalization and the ability to So, uh, currently, I took the example of a segment, right? So, within the segment, segment is a CDP, mm -hmm. right? So, as I said, uh, there are destination group, there are hundreds of uh, integrations that you can do. So for the personalization case, you can choose your own uh, tool that does this. For example, if uh, API personalization could provide a connector uh, to segment, uh, download the uh, you know, system, then yeah, you can run it. Yeah, probably, but maybe you won't use API CDP and segment together yeah. because both of them are CDPs. But, but yes, those segments can, like typically, let's say in Drupal terms, right? I mean, you come up with smart content module as an example, right? So the segments that are created over here can be synced with your Drupal segments. And on the Drupal side, you can define who's this segment and show this kind of content. 
So yes, CDPs are specially for that. So you are able to target marketing automation, you are able to target personalization on various touch points that you may have. So yes. Is there any open source uh, CDP? Uh, there is Apache Unomi, uh, which only supplies the engine. So you can, uh, what happens is technically you need the infrastructure and the architecture to store this kind of an information about the users, right? You can use Apache Unomi as a CDP, but it's not a perfect CDP because on the interface you don't get a lot of different options like creating segments. Mm -hmm. But technically what I've seen, one of the organizations that exists and uses and built something on top of Apache Unomi is uh, Drop Solid. They have, I mean, it's their proprietary product, but then they have built something on top of it which gives you a CDP in your room. But technically if you wanted, you can use Apache Unomi. Unomi, U-N-O-M-I. And then there is a caveat because, you know, it requires a lot of calculations, you know, calculating power. Uh, you know, to generate uh, those profiles. The profile generation looks simple, but it actually doing a lot of calculation in the behind the scene. It is merging the profiles, you know, based on some sort of matching things. Right? It is also updating the profiles, and it is creating the profile. Right? So, uh, in my opinion, uh, we should uh, go with the proprietary solution because it has it has all the infrastructure needs that. You know, uh, that is required to handle those, you know, that huge data sets. Data sets. For a normal organization, for example, some uh, CDPs are using billions of calculations. Right, so just to uh, get in these profiles. I give you an example, uh, as you have uh, seen, uh, you know, that uh, Netflix series, uh, Social Media, where, you, you know, this implementation you can see with the, the main character's profile is building with the Millions of uh, calculation that their their ge geographical location, who is sitting, uh, you know, beside him within a, you know, that ge geographical location. Uh, all these information is gathered through that uh, that CDP system and then creating a single profile. So it is always recommended to use some. Uh, and there are a couple of other CDP open source solution. I don't recollect like the name to be honest. Uh, but then a lot of these like the mission mentioned, these proprietary CDP specially come up with. Again, I can we cannot get off a stage these days without talking about AI and ML. Everybody is talking about it, but then a lot of these CDP, especially segment and even FBI CDP, they have inbuilt AI enabled in the machine learning uh, algorithm. So you, can, you need not know, I mean, as a marketer or even as a developer, you need not know to use the existing models. But then some of these CDPs provide that studio where you can do and create your own ML models on top of it as well. And you can, by all means, you can do it on Apache Unomi as well. It's just that it will be a little bit more of an effort. And there are a couple of others, but again, I don't know. Like up to what extent or what's the limitation? I recently came from a module, a Drupal module called uh, Smart Contract. Yeah, yeah, it's a personalization module. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. So it, it's just the module which lets you switch the blocks. So, for example, right, a module on homepage or Hindu banner is there, right? So you make it as a smart content. Hey, two people from Pune show this particular image. So people from Mumbai show this, right? I mean, uh, so we, we actually did a small POC where any Iron Man fans, right? I mean, when there was this Captain America versus an Iron Man. Uh, movie, right? So maybe there are people who are fan of Captain America versus there are people who are fan of Iron Man, right? So we were actually able to switch the banner and make that one character more prominent. So we use smart content over there powered by Acquia CDP uh, at the back end. So you can actually do that and yeah, smart content is one of the modules. There are other smart blogs and there are other sub modules. Uh, I think we are uh, as part of that particular package. Right. Uh, I know, I mean, we have taken a lot of your time, so yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, if, in case you have any additional questions, please feel free, us, feel free to reach out to us, we are here. Uh, and uh, we would be happy to kind of get into any more further discussions, but yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.